successful or not. It's not that, oh, well, Aness made some money, and I guess if I make as much money as Aness made, then that makes me a success. I don't think that's the best way to do it. Also, because I know some of us are, are clickers, this is all available, the entire presentation is available um, for download in the SCED app, so you don't have to click, 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 <laughs> unless you want to. Um, so I, ha I always have a goal, and my goal is always the same with every business endeavor that I'm doing. My goal is always for it to make me $3,000 a month, because $3,000 a month is what it takes. I live just outside of Washington, D.C., and $3,000 a month is what it takes for me to take care of my household expenses. I still have two 20-year-olds living at home. <sighs> that is really the reason why, you might, why I might disappear into my room, because there's nobody there. I don't have to clean up behind anybody, and there's housekeeping. So if I'm not here, that is where I am. Still, <laughs> that might, $3,000 might not be your goal. That is my very specific goal in order for anything that I do to be a success. But your goal might be different. Your goal might be to pay a car note. It might be to pay a credit card. Maybe you want to replace your Amazon income. Or maybe it's a different, it's not a financial goal. Maybe you want to serve your readers and give them different products. Whatever it is, I think that having a goal is so crucial so that you can know what success looks like. When I started learning direct sales, and I started learning in spring of 2022, and I launched my store in May, and in May of 2022, I made $235. And I was so proud, guys. The next month in June, I doubled that. I made $418. And then, as is my way, I stumbled in July, I lost money, I almost gave up. But I'm, I, I'm a tenacious person, so I kept at it. And what I started to do is, I, I come from television, I have a, a panel right after this on screenwriting. I incorporated what I learned from my screenwriting days into my direct store, techniques like how to keep viewers in their seats during commercial breaks, which I'll talk about in my presentation tomorrow, and the, in August, of 2022, my store made $1,200. The 2Xing kept going. In September, I made $2,136. In October, I made $4,533 selling direct. Yes, because I made the, the number one change that I'm gonna talk to you about. By the end of 2022, with this new business venture, with me failing a lot, with me starting halfway through the year and failing a lot, that's what I managed to make last year. I did better this year. There's so much opportunity for growth with direct sales publishing, but guys, this is launching a new business. And when you're launching a new business, there's growing pains, there's stumbling. And my goal is to get you started and to show you the number one thing that made me profitable, and that was story. Please understand that if you are in Kindle Unlimited, you cannot sell your books directly on a direct sales platform because you signed a contract. So please understand that if you are in KU and you're like, I want to do this, uh, print books are not exclusive. Audiobooks, unless you put them with ACX, are not exclusive. You have other opportunities. Maybe you could, ev maybe you could even decide to do your pre-order direct before you enroll it in KU. So if you are in KU, some of the tactics that I'm telling you, just think about different ways that you could do this, this, these tactics. So when I started, I didn't focus on building my entire store. I focused on getting up one series, one bundle, one series page. Because think about it, guys. When you send readers to the number one and the number two ebook store in the world, that's Amazon and Kindle Unlimited, when you send them there, you are not sending them to Amazon.com. You're sending them to your book's product page, to that one place, or to your series page which is still the one place. If you are sending out a newsletter and you're putting in a link, the link goes to the book or to the series. If you're, sending, if you're using an AMS ad, if you're using a Facebook cost per click ad, same thing. Nobody sends their book. Nobody sends a reader to Amazon.com and say, go find my book. <laughs> you laugh, but I'm right. So I want you to be thinking about that. I want you to start to think one page, one product, or one bundle of products. Because then if they buy the book and they like it, which they will because you're awesome, then they get to the end of that book and you, of course you have your back matter set up and you're sending them to the next book or to your newsletter, whichever you choose. But that's how we start to funnel them. 
That's how we then get them to go and buy the next book, the next series, and so forth and so on. I cannot think of any type of scenario where you send them to your storefront. So that's why I'm saying, if you're gonna build a Shopify store or a Thrivecart store, or you're gonna get set up on WooCommerce, you're not immediately sending traffic to your store's homepage. At least I can't think of a reason why you would do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of reader behavior and one of the biggest reader behaviors, entertainment consumers behaviors over the last few years is binge mentality. You want to give them an offer that they can't refuse. We'll talk more about the construction of this offer in a second, but I just need to convince you to not go full hog in building the entire storefront before you've proven the concept of one or a series of books. Because it's unlikely, sorry, I'm real, I'm gonna be real with you, it is unlikely that you're gonna be profitable out of the gate. I just showed you all my numbers from last year. I fell down a lot. Great sales pitch and that's right. Well, like I said, I'm trying to be real because I lost that money and I want you to start to think about what offer can you give these guys? And then think about where you're gonna send them. You wanna draw readers in, so I want you to consider using the newsletter, the social media, the Facebook ad, and we're gonna to get to that, but not amazon.com and not shoppingness.com either. They're either gonna to go to your website, to a landing page, or to a product page. And again, it doesn't matter right now which you choose. Personally, I started with PayHip a few years ago. I know Joanna Penn is, is at the conference, but she had been, she had talked about PayHip, and I was like, oh, I wanna do that. And she has a really great tutorial on her site. I followed that, I set it up, and I got sales, and that's when I got bit. When that money came into my account the next day, I was done, and I was constantly trying to find better ways to do this. I settled on Shopify, but I settled on Shopify because I like how they bundled books together. Google Play does that. Google Play has a feature where you can bundle different books in different series. I love how Shopify did the coupons. Nook has that. You can do coupons at Nook. I think you can do it in Google Play too. And I also love how Amazon has the variants. You have your ebook, your print book, your large print, your audiobook all at the top. You can do all of that on Shopify. So that's why I was convinced to go with Shopify. But I started with PayHip and my stuff is still up there on my website. There's still PayHip links up there because I have a lot of books. It would just, just take me like a couple of weeks to, to swap out all the, the links and take it down. And it still works. PayHip still works perfectly fine. I also went to Shopify because they have a lot of apps that could can increase the value of the order when the reader was there on the page. So I did a lot of stuff with what I had. I highly recommend that you don't just sell one book. It becomes really hard to make a profit when you're just doing one book at a time. Instead of one book at a time, I sold in bundles. And that's when I started to get profitable. Because think about it, when we have like a three or four dollar product and you're running Facebook ads or you're running social media, with Shopify, it's $40 a month that you have to pay. And that gets a little hard trying to do $4 here, $4 there. So I began to bundle up my uh, books. I bundled in series, I bundled in first in series. I write romance, so I bundled in, there's only one bed, that trope, or I bundled in Christmas romance. So I bundled everything together. I also love a discount, I'm a discount girl. So I would put, I would bundle up those books and then sell them at 25% off or sell them at 50% off because all I'm paying is a service fee. So that was still a really great profit for me. Plus I took advantage of readers binge mentality and I could tell them, hey, you can get the whole thing all at once and that really worked for me. Um, the AnnesWrites.com uh, Canva bundle graphics, that is a free um, download where you can go into Canva and you can just slap your book covers onto that and then it's all made for you. You don't have to call a cover designer to get this done for you or anything like that. So I recommend that when you're choosing your players, you start to think about how can I bundle these together, even if they're not all in the same series. Start to think about how, can, how do these standalones connect so that readers can think, huh, this is a great deal. It's not just one book. Maybe you sell them as a duology. Maybe you sell them as a, the trilogy. Whatever you choose, I just think that doing more than one book is gonna get you more bang for your buck. 
<clears throat> My next tip is you want to be organized. This is a lot of work you're going to see when you sit down to do it. I have um, my metadata cheat sheet up there. Let's see if, I, if this works, if I switch it out. Sweet, it worked. Okay, so this is what that download link looks like. You have to be organized when you do this. You're gonna have a lot of links, a lot of um, codes that you're gonna need to keep track of. And this is another free, you, I think I have this on, I'll give this to you on Google, but you can also download it as a Word doc if you prefer that. Um, don't get scared, I'm gonna show you what mine looks like. This is my 13 book series. So there's 13 books here, I have a lot of books. Um, and when I do my metadata, I have all the information here. I have how long it is, I have the print, the Amazon, the different um, countries that it is, I have why. So I have it on iBook, I have on uh, Barnes & Noble, I have it everywhere. I have everything that I could ever possibly need. You need to be crazy hyper-organized. I love how, when I use Vellum, and I love how with Vellum, I love how they organize my ebook files, and I basically now co-opted the way that they organize things. And if you were to look at my computer, you would kind of get a little bit of hives because I'm super hyper organized. But you have to be organized. So that aneswrites.com forward slash metadata, take it, use it, make it your own. The next tip, I love this graphic. I thought it was so clever. Books are a need. The books are not a need. I'm an author, I'm a reader, so of course I think the books are neat, but they're not. They're a luxury. You have to prove that, you're, that the reader is gonna have a luxurious experience because this isn't automatic money. And if you were me and you had a book budget every month, it would always eat into the food budget, but the kids didn't seem to understand that. <laughs> ramen is, you can get really creative with ramen. But your readers are already in a committed relationship with Amazon, and you have to think what's gonna make them look over their shoulder at you and your direct store. And to do this, I recommend, I think we're all like at least my generation in here, I recommend the mall ploy. Do you remember when you used to go into the mall and into the food court and they would have, um, especially um, Chinese food restaurants would have like a little morsel on a toothpick and you would take that and you pop it in your mouth and the next thing you know you turn back around, you were heading to McDonald's or something, you turn back around and you're buying the whole meal there. Well, that's the, that's the idea. Give them a morsel and then they're gonna want more. So the, how does that translate? Well, for your new or cold readers who haven't read you before, who've never read your books before, you can lure them with a free book or a discounted book, but it's something that they cannot get anywhere else. For your old or your warm readers who do know you, you can start running your pre-orders on your site. You can start doing specials. Maybe you can do a rewards program. You can send them coupons directly in your newsletter. It has to be something that they cannot get anywhere else. The next thing that we wanna do, I love Amazon. Amazon has absolutely changed my life and I, I, I shout that to the KDP people whenever I see them. And Amazon has taught me so much. It has taught us all so much. And one of the best things that Amazon taught me was about making it about the story. When you go onto a direct sales site, be it Thrivecart, be it WooCommerce, whoever, they have a standard, standard formula. Image, buy button, specs. Well, oh, that's great if I'm trying to buy a lamp and I want to see a picture of the lamp, I see how much it costs with that buy button, and then I see the specs, like what kind of lamp it takes, what kind of light bulb it takes, what kind of power it is, how big is it. That doesn't work with books. What are you going to put up there? It's 400 pages. It's six by nine. That's not going to entice a reader. We have to sell them with story. And one of the best ways that we start to sell with story that Amazon taught us is using that A-plus content. When you go and you look, again, and you just see that just standard image, buy button, specs, it's not gonna turn a reader on. So you wanna use what we learned on the Amazon um, A plus content because that is gonna start talking to them about story. Talking to you about story, this is how you start to sell, not with the specs, but with the world, with the characters, with the trope, and maybe even with you yourself as the author. Readers want to get immersed in a story world. That's why fandoms exist. It's why you know which house you belong to if you're a Harry Potter fan. It's why if you're a Whovian, you know that there's two pools on the TARDIS. No Whovians. Okay, one day someone's going to, oh, yes, thank you. 
You want to give a sense of belonging on your storefront. You want to have the identifiers that are going to allow others to connect with you and your world. Look into your world building. This includes contemporary folks. Did you have a small town? Is there found family? What are the parameters that attract the readers to your world? Lead with that. Invite them into your world. Small town. I write small town military romance as my second pen name, Shanae Johnson. These stories are set on a rehabilitation ranch with wounded warriors, and they're searching for healing, but they had to. I love marriage of convenience. Marriage of convenience is my catnip. So these soldiers, they're, the land that they're living on got rezoned for families. So if they want to stay there and get their healing, they have to get married. <laughs> hey, putting my kids through college right now. <laughs> so I lead with my world, and I invite readers into that world. I load up with keywords, with themes, with tropes. I load up with the catnip that romance readers tell me that they want. I put that right up front so that they see it. You can also lead with characters. Again, romance is my first language. So if you have an alpha male or a cinnamon roll hero or cowboys, or maybe you have a female sleuth, maybe you have single moms. I love a Cinderella story. Or if you're an urban fantasy, girl in pretty dress with magic hands. Thriller authors, what are your tropes? Military science fiction authors, what are your character archetypes? Epic fantasy authors, do I even need to have this conversation with you? You guys exist on world and character. But maybe it's your voice. Maybe, um, maybe, it's your, maybe you also write it in your character's voice. That would be another great thing. I know Jennifer Hilt is here in, in, at the conference. Make sure you go up and say hi to her. She wrote an amazing, an amazing book called The Trope Thesauruses. So if you have trouble with tropes, she's your girl. But you can also grab her book or you can go to tvtropes.org, and that will start to help you to figure out, hmm, what tropes did I put in here, or what tropes should I start to lean in with? And what are the obligatory scenes? Like in a marriage of convenience, my favorite thing, I love to write wedding vows. I love it. But my favorite thing about the marriage of convenience is these dummies always seem to forget that, they, that a kiss comes with the marriage ceremony. And they're like, oh, I got to kiss her. And then they do, and then it's feelings. <laughs> or you can lead with you. There's a lot of charismatic authors out there, and a lot of people will make it, hey, again, I love Amazon. I'm just saying that for the record. But a lot of them are like, hey, cut out the middleman of Amazon. Come to me directly. You want to support the author? Support me directly. And that works, because there's a lot of people that don't like Jeff Bezos. I'm not one of them. I'm really happy. <laughs> um, so you can do that as well. You can, you can lead with you. I, let me show you real quick what I choose to do. I choose to, this is, what's still working for me is leading with a landing page. We've been taught that we want to have as little friction as possible between the reader and that cart. And I believe that. However, I'm also a wannabe scientist and I like to lead with data. And I think I like to lead with data so much because I write romance and I'm always dealing with feelings that I need a break when I'm coming to marketing and I just look at the data. And the data told me that, the data told me that this, this yellow will stop the scroll. The data told me that um, having my story there, meeting the wounded warriors who come to live at this place and they have to get married. The data told me the higher up that was because I use, I'm going to jump around for just a quick second. I always go off script. Um, the data told me, and because I, I use spyware, um, there's, um, when you are selling direct, you are on your own storefront. So when we send people to Amazon or to Nook or to Apple, they're collecting this data about reader behavior. But when it's on your site or, and, or your store, which is still your site because you own it, you collect all the data. So I learned how to use spyware. Um, uh, this particular one is Mouseflow, but if you choose to use Shopify, and I think Thrivecart as well, they have one built in that you have to pay for called Lucky Orange. And what the spyware will tell you, and what I learned from, from it, is I started to build landing pages. And I tried out a bunch of different images. This one won. I, I A-B tested every single thing. I A-B tested the type of soldier. 
I A-B tested, should I have faces on there? I put one picture with faces, one picture with the feet, the feet one out. I A-B tested where I should have, I used to have my buy button up top. But then I A-B tested the buy button and this blurb. The blurb won by leaps and bounds. I A-B tested, um, there's, um, because the person that, the, my main mentor who taught me direct sales said that I should have um, the price tag and then have it crossed out. You, you've seen that before, they have it crossed out. Readers weren't really responding to that for me. They wanted, they, were, they would scroll down, and I knew that because the heat map showed me, because the heat map will record movements. They would scroll down and look for the price. So I'm like, well, why, why am I, this is friction. Let me get rid of it. And I just told them up front what the price was. They would also scroll down so that they could read the blurbs, because like, you can see where they're spending their time on the page. So I moved the blurbs up to the top. And I saw that, that that made them spend longer on the page, which is why I was like, hmm, yeah, this image, buy button, specs, is not working. We are selling to readers. We have to tell them a story if we want to capture them. So I lead with story. And then further down the page, I started to do the other sales tactics where um, I would cross out the price. Here's another thing that really worked for me, and guys, I A-B tested everything down to the, the color of the buttons, I A-B tested. And the, um, the spyware showed me that when they came to this part, they lingered again, because this gave them a, this gave them a, um, a choice, like a confined choice. You can get the e-books, or if you want to hold it in your hand, you can get the print books. I, was, I tried to put the audio on there as well. That would slow them down. That was too many choices I found with my data. So that, the, and again, this is the landing page. So they still have to click on another button. But I also tested, well, let me send a Facebook ad to this landing page and let me send a Facebook. This is, my, this is where they go when they're actually ready to buy. This is my, this is my Shopify, remember. They just have the image, the, um, the buy button, and then the, the um, the little specs, and I changed this up to look as much like that landing page as possible, and this converted better, but the landing page still converted better. For me, I have two pen names. For my sweet pen name, the landing page that's on my website, and I don't mind if you go to this landing page, please don't go to this landing page and mess up my algorithm, because it's gonna be like 100 people come and see it, and like two buy, that's not good for me. Come and look at this as much as you want. This is, my, this is on my website, I, I don't care. But this is what still converted for me. They wanted to come, they got comfortable coming here. I really don't know the reason. But they got comfortable coming here, looking at all this stuff, spending time on this landing page, and then clicking one of these buttons. But when I sent them straight here to the, the product page, just for my Shanae, my sweet pen, I guess they're just a different audience. My conversions went down lower. So I don't send here. For my Ines Johnson pen name, I can send straight to the, to the cart. And they're, they're happy, they'll buy. I don't know. I, it has to have to do with the audience. OK, so I love spyware. Mouseflow is what I used. Um, it wasn't that expensive either. Um, but if you decide to go with Shopify or like uh, Thrivecart or something, you can use Lucky Orange. And I'm sure there's more. These are just the two that I know. Another thing that I absolutely love about direct sales is the ability to ask, do you want fries with that? And upsell. So most of the platforms have the ability for them to, once someone gets to your cart, you can ask if they want to add. And they're already in the buying mood. They've got their credit card out, and they're get ready to add to that. However, if you are balling on a budget, as I know some of us are, you can, this, if, you, if you're doing any of the upsells and cross-sells, this is an added cost. They want their money, and sometimes they just take it out of the sale. That's how they choose to work, or some of them will, you have to pay a monthly fee. But if you are balling on a budget, when they get to my cart, I get to control my also bots. These are all me. I do know some enterprising authors that have, are working on affiliate links with each other, and they're putting other people's also bots who write like them on their page and getting money from that. It's really smart. I'm not there yet. But still, you can, do, you, can, you can choose to have other information there. This I don't have to pay for. The other stuff that you would have to pay for. The, up, the other upsells, you would have to pay for the upsells and the cross-sells. Another thing that you can do is really pay attention to your flows. So we all know about newsletters. We probably live and die by our newsletters. Well, when you go direct, 
when someone comes onto your store, they collect more information from you. So when some, when, if, if you've ever gone, if you clicked on a Facebook ad, if they got you and you clicked on a Facebook ad for like, if you're a woman and you clicked on a cute bra, or if you're a guy and I don't know, maybe you could go on golf clubs or something, I don't know. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, and then you change your mind. Have you ever gotten an email saying, are you sure you have a cart left open? Well, you just went on somebody else's site. So they, they can, Shopify, Thrivecart, they can come back and, and ask you, hey, are you sure? Do you sure you don't want it this? These are abandoned cart um, flows. An abandoned cart email is essentially sent to a customer who added something to the cart but then didn't check out for whatever reason. And the email acts as a friendly reminder to the consumer to say, hey, come on back. You can set this up automatically in Shopify. I'm pretty sure in Thrivecart too. I haven't investigated Thrivecart as much. But you can, you can set this up and this just goes automatically for you. There's other automations as well. There's other automation flows. You can set up other flows to say, well, if someone purchased my first bundle, I can say if someone purchased that bundle, remember we have tags in most of our email service providers? You can tag someone when someone um, clicks on something, they add it to the cart and they purchase it. And then you can set up a flow, which is different than an email campaign. It's a flow that says, hey, Seven days later, it'll say, hey, I saw that you bought this particular product. You might want to try this one next. Start to think about that, guys. I have over 100 bucks. I have flows upon flows upon flows. So if you bought the first book, I'm going to send you a flow for the second book. If, then I'll send you a flow for the third book. You automatically get tagged every time you purchase. If you bought the bundle, great. I'm going to then send you um, flows about, hey, have you read book one? Hey, have you read book two? And then at some point, I'm going to say, hey, buy the next bundle, or hey, consider the print book, or hey, have you thought about the audiobook? And the flows keep going and going and going and going forever and ever, amen. I have friends who are making serious bank just on their flows. Um, Shopify has their own flows that you can set up, and the others do too, but these integrate, um, these flows integrate with MailerLite, MailChimp, and I believe ActiveCampaign, they may integrate more. Um, and all you have to do is, is hook up, I'm a Shopify convert, you hook up Shopify to your, your newsletter service provider and then they take it from there. It's beautiful. Or again, if you're balling on a budget and you've already bought Shopify or Thrivecart, you, they have flows within their system and you can set those up in there. Okay, great. So you've got your bundles, you've got your product page set up, you've got your bundle set up. Now you want to think about, okay, how do I get people here? How do I get them on my site? The first thing that I did was a soft launch. And the way that I did the soft launch is I offered, I like free. I offered a free download that they couldn't get anywhere else. And once they clicked on that download, I had them. Because think about what the main uh, pinch point is going to be for them, the main bit of friction. They're going to have to give over their credit card. They're going to have to sign up for a new store. They're very loyal to Amazon. And then I use BookFunnel to deliver my books. Then they're going to have to set up a BookFunnel account. Well, give them something free. It could be a, a deleted chapter. It could be a second epilogue. Give them something free that they can't get anywhere else. They'll come running. And then they set everything up. They set up their, uh, the, if you're in Shopify, they set up their Shopify account. You've captured all that information. They set up their book funnel account. They only have to do it once because Damon is awesome. And then he's, every time they are buying something from you, it goes directly to wherever they told it to go the very first time. So you've eliminated that friction. And then when you're ready to sell to them, then you can send them another email because you've captured them. Send them an email with a discount code or send them an email saying, hey, I've got a brand new book. So this is an example of the free offer that I did. Again, all of this is um, download. It's um, in the PDF. So you can see it there. But I basically, this is to the people who already knew me and said, hey, I'm giving away something for free. And I told them, I'm like, hey, I've started a new store. I want you to come and see. I want you to buy direct from me. It's very simple. Let me prove how simple it is to you. Go grab this free piece. And you'll see how incredibly simple that it is for you. So I did it for free. And then I offered the discount. So I started sending weekly email. I have a lot of books. I started sending a weekly email every Friday that said, hey, you can get a dollar off this book if you buy it direct from my shop. You can't get it on Amazon or, or Nook or anything like that. And because Amazon is not going to track me on my direct sales, they can't do that whole price match thing. Ha ha. <laughs> and, and then I started doing events. I started to make special books that you could only get on my shop. There's a million ideas. These are just my handful of ideas. 
so great, Ines. I see how you can do this with a soft launch with people who already know you, but what do you do when you want to sell to brand new people? And that's when I do my heart launch, and this is when I, I love a Facebook ad. I'm fully committed to Facebook ads. And I, I do recognize that I am privileged because I am a romance author, and, on, and romance authors, we, our readers are on that site, and they said, I love Debbie May Comer, she's my interest, or I love Janine Frost, she's my interest. So we have tons of interests for us to be able to go and find our Facebook audience. Um, the download there at nestwrites.com forward slash at cheat sheet. Again, if I'm going too fast, this whole presentation is available on SCED, but it's nestwrites.com forward slash ad cheat sheet. Um, I learned Facebook ads from a lot of people, and my favorite person was Sky Warren, who was no longer teaching her Facebook ads class. But I asked her, I was like, can I modify your, because um, she had an ad cheat sheet. I was like, can I modify yours? Because I love what she did in the beginning, and then I used some other tactics, um, as a, you'll see in just a second. So Sky Warren had um, this strategy where she would grab six creatives. Those are six images, Here, like as in these examples. She would grab six images, start with six, make sure that it had, um, she called it the advertising core story. I call it, make sure it has conflict and keywords. So I make sure if I'm doing my dragon shifters that it has dragon shifters, it has paranormal in there. I put all that information in there. I put my character archetype in there, the setting. I make sure that the, the setting that it looked like in the ad, that it looked like it was fantasy romance. I also make sure to have social proof like reviews or maybe if I got an offer, author to blur at me. And I also gave that sense of urgency. This is a new release. This is a sale. Get it free for a limited time. So I would take those six ad creatives. And then once I had my six ad creatives, I would target one to three interests. And I love an author target. Again, I know I'm privileged because I'm a romance author and we have a ton of targets on Facebook. There's going to be people teaching about different ad strategies here. Listen to them if romance isn't what you write or if you write in a super, super niche and you can't find these targets. But I would use one to three ad targets. And I would, so people would always say, well, once you get to around 400 to 500 impressions, that's when you can start to make decisions. And I, because I am me, I want to know why. You need to give me a reason. Nobody had a reason why. Then, y'all know it's political season, right? So I was watching a political ad, and I saw on um, an, uh, a poll that they did that, w that made policy changes. I looked over in the corner, down in the little fine print, and there was only 500 people that was pulled, that made changes to how we live our lives. And I was like, seriously, y'all just made a change based upon what 500 people did? And I said, huh, I guess that's all I need, really, to make a decision <laughs> about what I'm going to do with my Facebook ad. So once I hit 400 to 500 impressions, that's when I start to make decisions. I start to say, this ad is, this, comp this creative is performing better. Creative number two is performing better than all the other creatives. So I'm going to take that creative number two, and I'm going to iterate on the copy. I'm going to iterate on the headline. I'm going to iterate on the call to action. And after another 400 impressions, I change and I change and I change until I am hitting the goals that I set for myself. And the goals that I might set for myself, I don't really do traffic ads, but let's, say, let's talk traffic ads for just a second. Say I'm doing a $10 a day traffic ad. Well, I want to, I love it, I have to 2x. So if I spend 10, I want to make 20. And I will keep iterating and iterating until I hit that goal. So that's, that's when I start to think I am, I'm ready to scale. Ah, we're done. I'm almost done. So in order to scale, there's three ways that I know of, of how to scale. I can add more money to my ad, or I can add another ad set. Remember I said I do one to three interest targets? Well, I can just choose another three interest targets and add a brand new ad to that. Or I can add another country, because I mostly run in the US. That's it. Ha. That is one page at a time. Choose your players, organize your metadata, make a deal, get your A-plus content on there, funnel your readers, get with the flow, soft launch strategies and hard launch strategies. I do have a course, a, at your own pace course available. It's only $99 for you guys. It's at anestrites.com forward slash direct. And we have time for questions if you have them. I think you have to come up to the mic if you have questions. Hi. Hi. I have multiple questions. Oh, gosh. OK. <laughs> OK. For, should I say everything at once or one at a time? No, do one at a time. OK. So first is, um, when do you create time to update your website? Because I know you have a lot of books. 
my best friend is a web developer. I do it when she yells at me. <laughs> I'm, I do a lot of things, and there are some things that I just have to let go of. That's one of them. Cool. So find a friend. That would help. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, do you use Book for Now to deliver your books? Yes. Or you do? Okay. Damon is amazing. He's here. Go give him a gift. Okay. <laughs> but what, what, what is your view on using, because I currently have um, WooCommerce, What's your view on using WooCommerce too? I do not use WooCommerce, so I can't really okay. talk to that. But uh, again, I just want to iterate that this, these strategies will work with whatever you choose. I'm agnostic about what you choose. I just like Shopify because they did everything that I wanted them to do. Okay, second to last. Um, how do you deal with pri um, piracy? I don't. There are ways to deal with piracy. You, there's, that's a good conversation to have, but anyone who comes onto my site, that's my that's my area, so I, if they are clicking on things, I get to see who they are. They may give me something fake. It happens, I had a friend have someone copy their store, copy their store, put the pictures up there, put buy links up there, selling their $50 products for like $10. And then when somebody clicked on the product, it went nowhere, but they got that money. They took that down, Shopify took that down so quick. So. I really rely on readers to be like, hey, something's wrong. Okay. That's not the best strategy, but that's my strategy. Thank okay. you. And the last one, um, what did you say about um, for authors that have a very niche um, audience on Facebook ads? Like, who should they look if to? If you have their niche, there's, I think that there's, I think Matt Holmes might be here, and he has, he's talking about a really great idea of doing open targeting. So I would go to his talk. And I think Melissa Storm is here too, and I think she gave a talk on Facebook ads. I would listen to what, she's one of the first people that I learned from, so I would listen to what she says too. So that's Matt Holmes, right? Matt Holmes and Melissa Storm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Only have only have one question. Okay. So I have a Shopify store. Um, it's 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 new, but it's it's doing all right. And my question Yay. is on pop-ups, because I usually, as a sh uh, person buying, hate pop-ups. But there's mm -hmm. one that I'm using. I just want your opinion on, and it's the one that'll pop up and say, "So and so just bought this book three hours ago." It's small though, so it's not like in the way. But any thoughts on those? My, so it's a kind of like I'm not I'm not the person to talk to. And here's why I'm not the person to talk to. I'm so concerned about store speed. Yeah, that's, that, that's the reason that yeah. I don't do it. Okay. However, social proof is really important to some readers. So mm -hmm. if it's not messing with your store speed, and I would just take a, I would take a week mm -hmm. to just look at what was my conversion rate like before the pop-up. Write that okay. down. Okay. Put the pop-up on. What's my conversion rate like after the pop-up? And let the data tell you. That's a good idea. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, a lot of your like bundles and stuff like that. Well, you had a lot of those, so I was curious for doing direct sales for like a brand new author. Like, if you only have one book, should you do it? Should you not do it? I can't. I am sure somebody is doing it. I can't. I can't think of the strategies. And I, I, one of the reasons why it, it gets kind of difficult to learn from old folks, old fogies like me, is because I am so far beyond that one book that I've forgotten a lot of the stuff that I knew, and a lot of the stuff that. Is now is now. I don't right. know. That's that's doing one. I would if you can remember if you're doing. I would put this on my web. Here's what I would do. Do it on your website. Sell direct on your website. You can do pay hit. That costs you nothing except for the service fee. But doing a Shopify store that costs you thirty nine dollars. I can't remember. WooCommerce. I think it's one payment once. I just would. I would look at what you're what you're spending, and just make sure that you're not eating into your profits. That's my concern. So have that front of mind is make sure I'm not eating into my profits and maybe look at the pay hit on your website. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, is she stopping That's you? Time. Oh, yeah, we're on a tight budget. Just come over here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, really? thank you guys so much for coming out. <laughs>